You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Jenna's Path. So, the last place we left off. Hmm. You know, guys, it's been quite a while since I did, uh. Oh, yes! Last episode, I believe we were taking a look at Carl's computer and everything. We found some old pictures of the good old days. And I think, uh, our character has just woken up from a dream. So, let's see what else this creepy series has in store for us, shall we? Sit back and enjoy, and here we go. It takes me a moment, but I can't actually tell if Leo's eyes are closed or not. I picture it in my mind, him slowly turning his head, looking right at me with no expression. He has no eyes. They're just shadows. I blink, trying to shift my legs beneath the sheets. Fortunately, I can. I'm not dreaming anymore. Leo isn't actually looking at me. Why do I even think that? And why does it make me so unnerved? In that dream... Jesus. I slide my feet out from under the covers and sit upright on the edge of the bed. Maybe a splash of water will make me feel better, though I could really use a dip in an actual pool. At Pueblo, there's so many of them around, I take it all for granted. It's funny, I actually visited kind of the area where this, this takes place when I was in Colorado. The realization dawns on me that once I graduate, the chances of me being able to afford a place with one nearby are almost none. I ring my tail some in my paws. My fur is oily and damp. I'll definitely need to take a shower in the morning. Hell, if the, if the motel tub didn't look like it had been didn't look like it had seen twenty years worth of dirty feet, piss, and cum, I'd take a bath. But first, I've got to get that AC going. I look over to the wall-mounted AC by the window. I'm surprised this place doesn't use swamp coolers like every other home in Echo. It takes a second for my eyes to adjust to the darkness, but I manage to find and turn the control knobs. Despite cranking the thing to the max setting, only a petty only a petty stream of air is exuded from the front vents. It is cold, though, so there's that. I stick my face up to it, the blowing air on my whiskers making my jowls, my jowls rise instinctively. It's refreshing, and the world seems a little less hazy. Still, I feel gross, more so than usual. I remember on Saturday morning, I woke up super early to clean myself, trim my facial scruff and head fur, and just look as presentable as possible. I don't really know who I was trying to impress, maybe show everyone that I was all well-adjusted and normal now. All the grooming work all the grooming work I performed didn't last four hours in the hot car ride up to Echo, though. Especially when the AC went out all the way from Gold City to Route 93. I was nervous to see everyone again, really. Rose tinted glasses and all that sort of thing will only last so long. I mean, it's been three years, and I haven't really made anything of myself other than becoming another college debtor and an oversaturated major. I'm not like Jenna or TJ, who are absolutely going places. Hell, from what I heard, even Flynn became the city clerk. I guess I relate more to Carl than I originally thought. As much as I hate Echo, the moments of hanging with the group growing up are still some of the best I've ever had. Even counting recent college happenings. We're all friends, but that friendship came with a lot of serious weight to it, and baggage that was never unpacked, I guess. I didn't honestly expect us to even try to. Flynn had other plans. And who could blame him? After that, Leo's freak out and Carl going missing... Any sort of semblance of a fun, idle spring break is gone. It's like there's this buzzing tension in the air. Methane filling up a room and just waiting for the lightning of a, lighting of a match. God, and here I am, whinging about how the mood is ruined when, all, when my old best friend is just fucking gone. What the hell was I honestly expecting? Us to all just hang up a bunch of Christmas lights in Leo's backyard, grill up some carne asada, get drunk and dance to a bunch of indie playlists? And of course, I'd fantasized about some sort of brief reunion with Leo. I mean, that's natural, right? What I didn't expect was this whole thing with Jenna. I'm still sorting out how I feel about it all. I glance briefly to my camera bags at the end of my bed. I have a feeling I'm not going to get much done for my project. With some reluctance, I pull my face back from the cooling vents and head to the bathroom. There's a cramped little bathroom. I try to shut the door behind me quietly, but it's still pretty loud. I look at the sink and realize that it isn't going to cut it. I took off my shirt and underwear, then placed them on the edge of the counter. At home, I just throw them on the floor, but I don't really, but I don't really trust how clean the linoleum is here. I step into the shower. 
gets hot quick, so I fiddled with the handle some. There's some red fur tucked in the corner, so I'm guessing Leo took one earlier as well. He was worried the police would come by his place, so he insisted on staying here while we searched for Carl. I remember, him, I remember him and I used to take hour-long showers together back when my family was out of town. My parents had one of those walk-in Roman-style showers with marble tile. He thought it was the coolest thing. I bent down and picked up the tiny complimentary shampoo bottle from the rack and began to lather the contents into my fur. It's not exactly the best for specifically my type of fur, but it'll work for now. I bet Jenna would have loved that shower. She had to use an outdoor one for most of her life, as I recall. I think she lives off campus now in a studio apartment she picked out. I've never actually seen it. She probably splurged with her full with her full ride money and got something really nice. I bet it beats the hell out of com communal dorm showers, which are not as sexy as porn makes you believe. I begin lathering further down, and the mental image of Jenna's golden form slick with water sticks in my head. I cup myself, squeezing a bit. I'm starting to get hard. Smooth pink flesh is a sharp contrast from the rest of my fur, and I quickly cover it with my paw to keep it from the hot water. Jenna's seen me naked plenty of times, but mostly as a kid. Never stiff and ready quite like this. My heart thuds a little harder in my chest. I close my eyes, twisting my arm against the shower wall and resting my forehead against it. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. With everything going, with everything that's going on, maybe I'll feel better afterwards. Jenna has that effect on people, after all. I feel myself smiling a bit, sewing my tail some as I begin to pump away. <laughs> oh, someone's got some, someone's got some mind poison to work out. I step out of the bathroom in my towel. I wasn't expecting to take a shower when I first went to the bathroom, so I didn't bring a change of clothes in with me. Creeping over the pads of my feet, I disrobe and quickly begin to put on a fresh t-shirt and shorts from my bag. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Chase? TJ and Leo are no longer in bed. The Lynx is over by the light switch, squinting blurrily at me. Well... Leo blinks at me. Buenos dias. I quickly try to scamper on the rest of my shorts, for going underwear for the time being. Oh! Oh jeez, hey! Uh, sorry, Chase! TJ turns, quickly averting his gaze. Leo just sighs some, rubbing his eyes. Thanks for the show. <clears throat> Your phone was going off while you were in the shower. My cheeks feel a bit warm as I managed to finally get my shorts up to my waistline. No, oh, um, uh, who called? Leo stares blankly at me, looking more tired than any of us. I wasn't going to check. An uneasy look punctuates that comment, and it catches me a little off guard. Can I turn around now? Er, uh, yes, TJ. Thank you. The lynx uncovers his eyes and moves to the bed, sitting back down. He still looks like he hasn't fully woken up yet. Sorry for waking you guys up. I was really needing a shower. Otter stuff, you know. It's okay, Chase. You kind of woke me up from some pretty weird dreams. So, thank you. He manages a smile, still trying to blink the blurriness out of the blurriness out of his eyes by the looks of it. His irises begin to narrow back to a more slitted state. No problem, TJ. I actually should be getting back out there. It's 3.30 in the morning. Oh, sorry, TJ. It's 3.30 in the morning. Are you sure? I finish putting on my shirt and move to check my phone. Yeah, I'm sure. Man, when I find that goat, I swear to God. He stretches some before stifling a yawn. Sh Not gonna let him out of my sight for a month. It's a text from Jenna. Hi, Chase. Hi, Chase. I can't sleep, so I'm heading back to the motel. If you're up, do you want to go out looking with me? I am feeling a little better after my shower, so I send Jenna a quick text agreeing to help with the search. What does it say? TJ cants his head, peering at me with a sort of dazed, curious look. Jenna was having trouble sleeping, so she wants to go out searching. Leo looks up at me, his expression indiscernible. Isn't it kind of dark to try and look for him? I mean, not that I'm trying to dissuade you all, it just seems kind of harder. It's that whole 48 hours thing. The harder we look now, the better. Sitting back and praying everything will work out won't do any good. TJ's eyes widen some, looking a bit taken aback. His jowls twitch some, the feline looking down at the sheets between his legs. I... There's a knock at the door. The sound of jingling keys can be heard coming back from the other, coming from the other side. There's a scratching noise of metal on metal, the door being unlocked. After a moment, it opens. 
Jenna steps out from the darkness, rubbing her arms some and making a beeline for her bag. Hey, TJ. Chase. Leo. She nods to each of us in turn before beginning to rifle through her belongings. Aren't you supposed to be keeping watch at the house? Aren't you supposed to be in jail? TJ makes a noise that sounds like he just choked on his own spit. I try to avoid looking directly at Leo. He doesn't say anything, though I hear the bed he's sitting on creak audibly. She takes out two water bottles, tossing one to me. I only barely catch it, mainly because it's stopped by my nose first. Ow! My snout tingles at the aftershock. My nose feels wet for some reason, though when I reach up, there's no blood. Must be the bur must be the burst blood vessels. No! Oh. She, stif she stifles a brief amused huff, looking apologetic. You're still trying to wake up, I see. You think that's funny? Just walking in and hitting him like hitting him with that? Leo's, Leo's crackling baritone comes out a few decibels too loud, his tone stern, like a scolding parent. It has a way of catching everyone's attention. It wasn't the intent. There's a pause, Leo about to speak again, but Jenna managing to cut him off before he can. Speaking of, we're going to go check in with Duke, see if he knows anything. Leo's jaw shifts, as if he's trying to speak, to speak, but the words don't come out. He leans back, then forward again. Have fun. Chase, you all set? She looks at me, expectant. I guess she's ready to go. Oh yeah, sure. I force a smile, trying to downplay the cavalcade of tension this room has become. Goodbye, guys. See you later. TJ seems to be doing the same. Leo just stares. We'll text with some updates in a bit. Jenna, parts, Jenna pats my shoulder once before heading out. I follow suit. Hmm. Into the night. The air is surprisingly fresh outside, even a bit damp. It's as if the motel room itself had its own had its own oppressive atmosphere that was permeating my sinuses, and now I'm finally free. Near the horizon, thick gray clouds loom overhead. The reservation must be getting some rain. Juno seems to notice as well, taking a few steps forward into the mostly empty parking lot before speaking up. Kind of nice out, isn't it? Yeah. She opens her mouth to speak, but pauses some as she looks over her shoulder. A light frown crossing her blonde features. Come on, let's go. She starts moving again, heading toward the street. Duke's house, right? And we're walking? Yeah, is that a problem? She glances back. I reach down, feeling the tender, hardening muscles around my thighs and knees. Just still a bit sore from the hike, that's all. Oh, you're a tough guy, Chase. I'm sure you'll manage. tough guy? I hustle some to catch up, the Finnick already on the road. She smiles some as I catch up alongside her. Your phone is a flashlight, right? Yeah, oh, uh, give me a second. I reach into my pocket and flick on my phone. It takes a second, but I find the right button, the, crack, the cracked pavement in front of us quickly illuminating. Just in case we come across any snakes or spiders, or overweight rams, <laughs> those two. I shine my phone toward the sagebrush that winds along the narrow wash that passes by the motel. It's like I'm half expecting to see Carl's goofy, grinning muzzle peeking out through the brambles. I'm sorry if I woke you. It's fine. I was in the shower. You woke everyone else, though. Hmm. Jenna straightens her tank top, peering through the cracked glass windows of the old ice cream shop. Even the lease sign on the awning is mostly faded away. It's still got that old Victorian-style architecture that you've seen a lot of the buildings built originally by the wealthier settlers at the turn of the century. Faded green and pale blue paint still clings to parts of the main facade, with a copper metal roof a mix of dark amber and turquoise. In its heyday, it probably stood out something it probably stood out something fierce, a colorful contrast to the harsh beiges of the desert. And ultimately an opulent reminder of the old world amidst the new. I wasn't expecting Leo to be there, honestly. He giving you any more trouble? I watch the pavement turn to packed dirt beneath my feet as we round the corner into Gretchen onto Gretchen Road. It's a desolate stretch of road, the only striking feature being a concrete mixing business that closed its doors back in the 90s. You can still see the big mounds of grayish dirt past the slatted chain link. Ultimately, it takes me a moment to respond to Jenna's question. No, he's, uh, just upset. I can practically feel the fox's incredulous raised eyebrow, a trademark reaction if she ever had one. Actually, well, this is gonna sound stupid. Playing Leo's behavior off as him just being upset is stupid, but continue. I sigh. Sorry. Jenna frowns some and moves closer, nudging my arm with her shoulder. Hey, you haven't done anything wrong. I don't know about that. Oh? 
Again, that expectant look. Uh, here we go. I'm kind of glad you texted me. Didn't really want to go back to sleep. I guess I was having a nightmare. This same sort of recurring one I've been having that's a little different each time. Each stream I'm facing myself, but it's not me. Not like a mirror me. Things are different. Messed up. Blurred. Sometimes I... Well, it speaks and it's all distorted. It's like an old AM radio station with bad signal. Jenna looks away for a moment, then back him back to me. Um, oh yeah, I just want to take this moment. Uh, if you guys get a chance, watch AM 1200 on YouTube. It is really fucking creepy. You will probably enjoy it. It's very slow burn horror, though, just letting you know. And each time it gets a little clearer, and it might just be because it's fresh in my head right now, but I kind of remember what it was saying. I stop briefly, shining the, shining the flashlight on a tumbleweed rolling across the dirt road ahead. It briefly gets stuck on a mesquite tree, bouncing against the truck and leaving trunk and leaving a few twigs behind before rolling back along its course. Do you remember when I texted you that I got into Pueblo and you drove all the way back down here to celebrate? I do. We were going to surprise Leo, remember? I do. There's a delay in her words as she seems to already know exactly what incident I'm referring to. The prank. She lets out long she lets out a long, drawn out breath of air. We pretended you were cheating on him with those fake texts I was sending you. You smashed your phone, and you told him you were leaving Echo. Yes, it wasn't the best practical jokes to play on someone who was already fairly unstable. He wasn't... Chase, what does this have to do with your dream? She cuts me off, her tone more curious than stern. I know, it's just, the whole thing was just playing back like some kind of record, everything that happened. All the fake text messages you sent me as Jared, me leaving the phone on the table, Leo confronting me, then you showing up and telling him it's a joke, and then that he's overreacting, and then SMASH! I make a motion like I'm going to toss my phone down. Jenna flinches, instinctively grabbing for it, before sw slowly furrowing her thin brows at me. Has Leo been guilting you about that? No, not really. So you've been feeling guilty then? I guess. Why else would this be, you know, manifesting my subconscious and all that? Well, I'd usually recommend expressing this to Leo, if I didn't think that your attempts at reconciliation would be perceived by him as you trying to get back together. She rubs the bridge of her short nose before crossing her arms over her chest. We did already apologize for this years ago, but if you absolutely must, maybe wait until we're back at Pueblo. He's clearly got some issues to sort out right now, and you're under absolutely no obligation to try and solve them. Especially considering his recent behavior. It's incredibly difficult to help people that don't want to be helped. I agree. <laughs> you're probably right. She gives me a sidelong look. I mean, you are right. I rub my paw across my face, smooshing my own facial features into my paw pads. It's just shitty, I guess. You know, someone for 15 years of your life and you grow up with them. There's like, I don't know, a vested interest? I was there for every big mistake, triumph, you name it. I'm not sure what exactly further support I can even offer at this point. It's just been too long. Plus, I'm gone again as soon as this weekend's up. So what's the point when I'm probably just going to fuck things up worse? Chase. Jenna's tone is curt. I look over to see her face very much matches her tone. Leo was dry-humping you at a kitty arcade. You do not need to feel this conflicted about being upset about that. Look, there's a moment of hesitation, like she knows the right words to say, but needs time to phrase them more delicately. I understand that men have a different hormonal attraction to each other than generally what I feel, as a woman, when I am attracted to someone. For men, that feeling of attraction, and I am paraphrasing something you probably already understand on at least an intuitive level, is broadly more physical and sudden. There's an emphasis on aesthetics and, well, the mechanics of what's happening. I blink, getting the gist of what she's saying, but not exactly sure what she's going on with, where she's going with this. As stereotypical as it is, most women feel attraction as a sort of a slow burn, where passion is derived from intimacy, meaning, contrast, forbidden love, etc. She gesticulates in a swirling motion. That's not to say abrupt sparks of fancy don't form for women, too, or just being what they are. So I may not be adequately equipped to fully grasp the true nature of your guy's relationship, but... What Leo did at the Familyplex is just 
beyond dumb latent horniness. It's complete detachment from reality of two of two of your of you two's respective situations. Zuna's voice raises some, louder than her usual controlled level and probably inappropriate for this time of night. It's upsetting, especially especially so with all that's going on. I continue to walk slightly ahead of Jenna, unsure of what to say and feeling like if I met her gaze right now, I'd regret it. I shine my light on a lone desert willow that sits on the bank of the nearby wash. In the branches, flickers a reflected light shine back. Eyes. They're small and sitting squarely in a nest made from a, br from a bramble, like the sort of tumbleweed from earlier. Bird, I announce, monotoned. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna pause it right there. That was a funny thing that ended on. Bird! Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Echo. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!